a podcast to honor the gods. This better come with a sacrifice. Dave X Media. Welcome to the restricted section. The last breakup I will ever have to endure. Please stay with me forever, Sean. I love you so damn much. If you haven't done the reading, don't worry. We did it for you. Here's what we're talking about this week. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, the final chapter of the book, chapter 30, The White Tomb, featuring Dumbledore's funeral and the end of the book. I'm your host, Christina. My co-host today is here for some stupid noble reason. Haley, say hello to the listeners, Haley. Hello, listeners. Did you miss me in the, what, two, three whole episodes since I was last? They do. Yeah. You were voted favorite. Yay. <laughs> you actually haven't been here in one, two, three. There was three weeks without a Haley. Three whole weeks, but you survived. I'm so proud. Yeah, and the next four episodes... Hold on, the next five, six, seven. Okay, well, I need to take a minute. Oh, no, the next four episodes, you're not in either. But okay. that's only because two of them are already recorded. Uh, detention crew bonus episodes that I'll be Ooh. unlocking. Ooh. I'm looking forward to it, to be honest. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to say <laughs> our special guest today. <laughs> I just started talking to him. The, the guest does not exist until the host exists, it, it introduces them. Our special guest today, he just flew in in a giant blue carriage from somewhere across the sea. Sam from Content and Capable. Say hello to the listeners, Sam. Hello, listeners. And I would have to fly in a blue carriage from somewhere across the sea at some point. That'd to be get. awesome. Yeah. I, I like it. The flair for the dramatic is, is really, really prevalent in this chapter. Yeah, it is. <laughs> So y'all know Sam. He's been on the show kind of a lot before. He's kind of a big deal. Kind of my second in command over at Daily Sex Media, host of Content and Capable podcast, um, which has been on hiatus, but is coming back uh, this next Monday, right, Sam? Yeah, I'm really excited. I've got some great ideas and guests uh, locked in, planned, bits and pieces. Drink. Um, I'm really excited to share with you what I've been cooking up over the summer. I've also uh, got a new recording space and bits and pieces because I have a new job. So um, my yeah, hopefully... Yeah, congrats. Yeah, working in radio, hopefully my audio stuff will get a little bit better as well. Ooh. I'm very That's excited less. to see what happens there. Subtle, very yeah. subtle. <laughs> I'm really excited. It's, it's going to be so much fun this year. I have so many ideas, so I'm so keen to get in, yeah. right into it. I'm very excited. Awesome. Well, Sam, this is your first time coming on for the Half-Blood Prince. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, we had to reschedule from earlier. Yeah, we've had a little bit of a... I've had a bit of a rough end of 2023, realistically. Oh, truly. Which we'll get into a little bit in this chapter. But, oh, um, God, okay. <laughs> Foreboding as fuck. <laughs> I don't know. This book and the next book, I have read the absolute least. In fact, I will be reading along for the next... Um, series Ooh, <laughs> for Deathly Hallows. I know what happens in it, but Deathly Hallows and the Half Blood Prince. I think after Order of the Phoenix, I was so angry, fin- like reading Order of the Phoenix, that I didn't want to read the last mm. two books. Yeah. Um, and admittedly, I was in the throes of my mother banning me from reading books in high school. There was a whole mm. bunch of other things going on. But yeah, I it, Order of the Phoenix is a hard one to like. You finish that book and you're like, oh, I've got to move to the next one. Yeah, like, I definitely agree with you, Sam, that these uh, these last two are my least read of the series. And, like, I, I guess for me, because, like, I was kind of reading them, like, as they came out, like, from, I get, like, nine years old. Like, every time there was a long break between books, like, you were just stuck with that break, you know? So I would reread yep. what had already come out just over and over, Total, waiting and totally. waiting and waiting and waiting. And then, like, these last two books just came out when I was old enough that, like, I didn't really feel the need to do that. Any Like, I had discovered fan fiction, you know? Like, there was another <laughs> way for me. I think also because, like, having Sirius die mm. and, like, 
the ministry, like, and, and we start to realise, like, politics is a thing in the Harry Potter universe. I think it just yeah. becomes this kind of depressing reflection of real life. Mm. Ooh, I mean, yeah, these two last two books are really depressing, and that's I'm I'm in order of the Phoenix, honestly. So like, if I'm doing like a random reread, I'll randomly reread any of the four first books in isolation. Probably not the fourth, just because it's so long. But the story is good by itself. But like these ones, and like the same with the movies. Like this movie's pretty good. Maybe I'll watch it. But like definitely Deathly Hallows. I'm not just like dropping in on Deathly Hallows right. the movies. It's like oh, let's watch the like the last five percent of a plot <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so where does this book fall for you or this movie if that's what you remember more sam like this story how does it rank in your harry potter rankings it's not a bad book as has been a common theme through this season of the podcast for you christina i, th- I forget how much this book is really like interesting to read there mm. are a lot of really great elements and lots of things that are introduced in this book that are really clever and interesting. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, you're sitting here like really deeply frustrated at, you know, things not being communicated. And, you know, I think it sits very middle for me. Um, Okay. Lots of cool stuff going on. Still frustrating. Yeah. And like, It kind of brings you back to those first three books, like the wonder and the awe that is those, like, first few books. But Mm -hmm. doesn't quite match it because we've been sitting in this universe for now now six books at the end of this. It's true. (laughs) That's the thing is, like, when we talk about Horcruxes, like, I I forget who, like, maybe, like, Radio Mike or someone asked me, like, "Do do I like the Horcruxes, like, narratively? And my answer was, yeah, but it, I don't like that it took us five books to get to the true plot. Yeah. Like, it like, very feels tacked on. Yeah. It, like, yeah. there's, and there's other elements from like earlier in the series that like loop back around to influence the Horcrux stuff, but like, it's not enough of it that it feels fully intentional. It doesn't feel like we were building up to it this whole time, you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, cool. So, I mean, (laughs) you guys ready to get sad? I mean, okay, well, let's start with this. Let's just get it out there. Uh, How many funerals have y'all been to? And what what has the vibe check been like on most of those? Hmm. Haley, would you like to go first? I'm counting. Um, Oh. (laughs) It's not like that many. Uh, So... There was definitely at least one when I was, like, two that I do not remember. Um, Okay. I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm also including, like, memorials where, like, Mm -hmm. there wasn't a burial. Right, right. Uh, Definitely my great-grandmother, great-grandfather, Uncle Tom. Yeah, count out all the dead people. (laughs) Keep going. Uh, my parents' friend Jerry, who died in 9 11. Oh, God. <gasps> Sorry. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And I think my dad was the last one. Okay. So at least five. All right. And are they usually like religious or like. Not very. Uh, the ones with most of my family were in like. There's like a church in the town where they all lived that has like honestly a very pretty little memorial garden where they bury uh ashes and then there's like a big plaque with names of everyone who's buried in this little garden um that's nice so like yes religious but not very overtly and like kind of a burial but also kind of not oh uncle bill six um wow and uh (laughs) he was another one that was in the memorial garden my dad's definitely wasn't like they i they were mostly I don't know, pretty, not, not the kinds of people that go in for that much, you know? Yeah. Sam, so, what about you? What's your funeral count? <laughs> <laughs> Mine, um, I keep in mind I'm 22, so I'm fairly young in the grand scheme of things. Nobody and- likes a bragger, Sam. <sighs> And uh, look, I've, I've got to, I've got to bring it in at some point in every episode. Um, <laughs> there was this period of time 
when I was in high school where basically no one died and everything kept the same or we weren't, we just didn't rock up to funerals. Um, I don't know which it was. I do remember my mother went to one or two while I was in high school and because it was on a school day and she didn't feel particularly attached to this particular aunt or uncle was like, mm-hmm. nah, whatever, she'll go for posterity, but we don't need to be there. As kids, I think I went to like three or four. There was, so my mum's dad is like one of 11 and my mum's mum is like one of seven. So there was a lot of people dying. Oh God, yeah, um, I forget that that's your life. Uh, and they're all very religious. They're all Catholic things that happen in a Catholic church. Um, but uh, the most recent one I've been to, uh, and I haven't shared this with a huge amount of people, but I will share it publicly now, uh, was my grandfather died late last year uh, and uh, I sorry, had Sam. to fly had to fly back up for his funeral, um, yeah. which was an experience, to say the least. There was a lot I learned about the funerals and my family at that. But each each funeral felt like a big family gathering. It just felt like we mm. were there to catch up with each other. It almost felt like Christmas, but without the presents and the inappropriate T-shirts. It's cool that everyone that I've brought on for the end of this book has incidentally had massive and or recent death trauma. <laughs> That's a cool thing that I did by accident. I mean, if it helps, I already talked about my dead dad on this very you podcast. Did. You did, Haley. <laughs> time, to, time to do it again. Um, I've been to probably like between like maybe like eight funerals, um, several of which have been religious. Half my family is Jewish. The other half is Catholic. Different kinds of funerals. And one of them, it's all about heaven, baby. <laughs> And then the other one, it is not. <laughs> I feel like as well, it depends on like what's being said at the Catholic funeral, because you could have mistaken the funeral I went to last year as like, it, it could have been not religious if there wasn't a priest there. Oh, and then everyone praying when we, when I rocked up. Oh, sure. To, yeah, oh, the yeah. praying kind of gives it away. Yeah, I mean, I, f- I felt like, for example, like my grandma passed away a couple years ago and I, I felt like her Catholic funeral was like comforting to me because like that bitch loved God. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, this is she exactly really what you wanted, huh? <laughs> um, and that, so I've the two kinds of funerals I've been to are like religious funerals and um, extremely sad artsy funerals for friends who died super young of heroin overdoses. <laughs> mm. So those are the two kinds I've been to. Uh, and so uh, none, no funerals, no gone wood since my grandma passed away about two years ago. I completely forgot to say that my grand died when I was six months old. Wow. That, that was the big funeral. So mom and dad got married in like September. I was born in December and then my grand died I in see. like July. Uh, so hmm, my dad. Wait, let me do that math real quick. Oh, no, no, no. Catholic, it's deeply, I'm a deeply... got married two months before the baby <laughs> was born. <laughs> a miracle. Yeah, no, miracle, miracle. Well, well, no, no. Um, it's, apparently it's a common thing. Um, who would have That's known when you tell people not to have sex before marriage, they would have yeah, sex truly. before marriage. <laughs> what a, but what if they simply did not, though? Surely this would fix everything. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but my dad was twenty two or twenty one when my when his mother died. Uh, my young dad's youngest brother was fifteen at the time. So that one was mildly traumatic. But I wasn't there to remember it. I just feel guilty because I was the only grandchild that attended that funeral because I was the oh, only wow. grandchild that was born. Yeah. Damn! Imagine having a kid. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> You were like, oh, he was 22, and I was like, that's so young. Oh, my God. And then I was like, Sam, that's how old you are. Yeah. Yes. No, I definitely had a weird time when I was like, when I turned 25 and I realized that I was the age that, like, my mom was when she had me. And, and yep, I was my like, my mom had oh, three no. by the time she was my age, dude. My mom had three. Yeah, really. And I don't even want to talk about... <laughs> How many Sam's fam Sam's mom had by the time she was my age? Yeah, no, it's, it just recontextualizes <laughs> things of j- just like, oh god, oh yeah, god, sure. How, grocery shopping would be so much worse. It would be really hard, yeah, for sure. My mother does not grocery shop with children anymore. It's banned in our household. You, if you want to take the children her. to the shops, it's your funeral. Did you mean the act of getting it done, Haley, or the finances of buying? Yes. <laughs> yeah, the answer is yes. <laughs> To me, in my funeral experience, Dumbledore's funeral was more like the arty, sad, died too young, mm. um, like, f- 
funerals. Have any of y'all been to a funeral like this one? No. The nothing like my, this. My parents' friend um, wasn't. It was like 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 America, America fuck yeah version of this kind of. Oh, like okay, ju- like fine, very in somber and everything, just like very flag oh. draped. Um, uh, what with the nine oh. eleven and all, so like, so it's like yeah. America, fuck yeah, sad face. Yeah, uh, it's like America, fuck yeah, dot 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 instead of exclamation. Like point. it was, it was the most formal of, like that was the one like fully religious funeral that I think I've been to. Like there was a bit in a church, and then we were out at a cemetery, like outdoors, uh, kind of standing among the gravestones. So, mm-hmm. like, kind of similar to this in mm-hmm. terms of scale? Yeah. At my grandfather's funeral last year, it's funny because, so, the youngest two children on my mum's side read the eulogy, um, and then my mother came up. And my mother felt like she was the only one who felt appropriate to say this. Because theoretically, you mean, like, your the- mom's youngest siblings? Is that who you mean? Yeah. So, okay, the okay. two... So, yeah. like, adults. Yeah, adults, yeah. Okay, I got um, you, I got you. <laughs> not children, really. <laughs> I was like, huh, the youngest. That's yeah. interesting. Mum came up and she felt like she was the only one she could do this. Because basically, I think the understanding is you can either just have the service, the funeral service. You read the eulogies, the blessings are said, and then you go and bury the body. Um, which makes it sound like a crime now that I think about it. Um, <laughs> bury the body. But um, you, the other option is that you could have like a full-on mass afterwards, which is what we did because... That's the, what my grandfather would have wanted. So my mother came up at the very end of the eulogy and she would like said something, you know, about how he would have wanted everyone to, you know, come up and have Holy Communion if they're able to. Um, and it was that weird thing where my mama, my mother turned around to me the night before and she's like, realistically, I don't think that any of my other siblings would feel the need or feel like they would want to say something but I feel the need to say something. And I was like, I cannot tell whether this is just the way you're processing grief or this is like a subtle dig at your siblings for not being as Catholic <laughs> as you are. Oh, my God. <laughs> Probably a little both. Yeah, grief a little makes bit of us both. do yeah. things sometimes. Yeah, like, honestly, there's uh, a surprising amount of pettiness that comes out around a death that, like, often doesn't get expressed outwardly but the passive aggression is like you could cut it with a knife dude my mom and i love joking about my grandpa's funeral because everyone got so shit-faced that's like a part of my family history that's like so tense like everyone was so drunk at the like reception after or whatever like everyone got into like a big fight (laughs) um so that was fun it did get a full debrief (laughs) Yeah, we had a, we had the reception and like there was a, like all of the all of my mum's cousins like rocked up with most of them uh, and like family friends and people that I remember when I was living with my grandparents right just before I started this content capable of all things and then once everything kind of died down in bits and pieces drink we went back to my grandparents place and all the aunts and uncles were there sorry all the blood relatives of my grandparents were there so my mum and her siblings uh, as well as a couple of grandkids, and you know, I was driving my mother because my mother and uncle decided they wanted to drink copious amounts of alcohol, which is totally fine. Sure. Um, and we got to debrief on all the cousins who had rocked up to the funeral and, like, why did this <laughs> person arrive? And do you remember the last time you saw that person? It was great. I loved it. Oh, so much God. family lore. Dude, oh, yeah, in the past, like, ten years, since me and my cousins have all been grown, we do only get, like, we only get together for funerals. All of our, like, nice family photos are from funerals. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's sad. Luckily, there's a wedding this year. <laughs> my dad's funeral was very, like, estranged uh, corners of the fa- like, formally estranged, uh, being stuck in the same room together and, like, pointedly ignoring each other. Love that. Ooh. Yeah, it was a great I time. I love that energy. It was a great time in the event space at the Lewis, at the Lewis Ginter Botanical Gardens. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Oh, the carpet was terrible. Is that is that where Brooke had her baby shower? It, w- uh, it wasn't the same room, but yes. Same building. <laughs> I love that. You could be banished oh. into the gardens and have to walk laps as well. <laughs> Honestly, I did like end up immediately, like the moment I could leave the room... And just escape the palpable 
bitterness radiating <laughs> off of my aunts at my grandfather, right. who I was oh meeting for the first time. I I did very much flee into the garden. <laughs> Good for you, girl. It's a good garden. There's plenty it's to flee into in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you've been there. Wait, you were I there have... during Brooke's baby shower? I was there during Brooke's but baby shower. But you hadn't shower. gotten an invite, so we made you take a walk. <laughs> no, it was me, right? Charlie, and Taylor, yes. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that is, in fact, what happened. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I, I'm glad to say <sighs> that post that, Brooke and I are much better friends, I think. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We just hadn't met each other in person at that point. That would have been an awkward way to meet my meet Brooke in person. It's true. Every single seat in that room was full. And um, I remember there, there were actual children there. But we, me and Zach and Alex and Haley and Andrew and Shauna, who are Leela and Jason, we were all sitting at a table being very loud and disruptive. And we were like... <laughs> The children's table is us, guys. Like, we're there's children here, but that's not the children's table. Yeah, the actual <laughs> children were pretty well behaved compared to us. <laughs> uh. All right, well, let's get into it, guys. Yep. Let's talk about the chapter now that we've, like, aired our... <laughs> so, like, what's your history with funerals? <laughs> the airing of literal grievances. Oh, yeah, that's very funny. <laughs> I Can we t- t- uh, talk briefly about how... Harry Potter has been at school for three years, and for three of those years, including this one, has not had to take final exams. Can we talk about no, that? that? I know. Shit. Well, it, and then also I noted that it said that the exams had been postponed, and I'm like, until when? Indefinitely. Like, they're canceled. That's called, they're, that's, that's canceling canceled. them. Why not just say canceled? Yeah, they're the, leaving an hour after the funeral. This is corporate funeral. speak for cancel. So stupid. This is how they tell you that that things are cancelled without saying they are. (laughs) They've cancelled exams too many times in a row. (laughs) Well, and they don't want to say they have because imagine what imagine what the parents would say if they cancelled the exam. In reality, everyone knows that no one's retaking them. The board of governors (laughs) knows goddamn well, but like they're not going to get the green light for this if they call it a cancellation. My high school did this all the time. We would indefinitely postpone all sorts of shit. Huh, that's so funny. They would say that they're postponing it. They wouldn't say indefinitely, but, like, we all knew it was cancelled. Oh, yeah, like when um, my cousin was engaged and it was, like, her engagement was falling apart and her wedding was supposed to be in May of 2020 and they were like, oh, oh, no, COVID, um, wedding postponed indefinitely. I was so disappointed when that happened because you'd been keeping me up to date with the drama up to that point, and like I really wanted to see what happened. I I was so curious. It was gonna be bad. Like ultimately, it was gonna, it was be, gonna, gonna so be bad. bad. There, and the I I'm with you, but there was a child involved, so that's why I'm glad that it was oh. like. I mean, it was oh, still pretty bad, child. but it was, it was still pretty bad. But at least they didn't get married. <laughs> thank God for um, that plague, huh? Yeah, thank God. <laughs> so many blessings in disguise. <laughs> um, lessons canceled, exams canceled. Lots of parents are coming to get students. Seamus Finnegan gets into a screaming row with his mom trying to stay for the funeral, which is like a really cool juxtaposition to the last time the camera focused on him for 10 seconds, which was in order of the Phoenix. When he was like, my mom thinks that you're a liar and a bitch. Harry. <laughs> so it's cool to see that everything's been flipped. For we love him. to see the growth. Isn't it canonical in the films, at least that he's got like a really thick Irish accent. Yeah. Yes. I, I mean, love the- again. Yeah, you could you just like imagine hearing a very loud Irish argument. That's I know. That's what I want to hear. I cannot believe this. I think it's a good thing, love. I just keep out of it, you. And that's who you were winking at in mass, winking mm-hmm. at your age. Christ, I feel sick. It was only a friendly wink. There is no such thing as a friendly wink. And, like, Seamus has a notoriously hot temper, which is probably, all of this is probably, like, slightly racist. I don't really know about, like, British Isle racism. Especially also his name being Seamus Finnegan, and then it's, like, yeah, it's he like has a really Irish hot temper. Irish, like. It yeah. sounds like J.K. Rowling got 90% of the way of putting red hair on him and then realized that she could only let people have red hair if they were the Weasleys. Right. True. True. Oh, my God. That's so funny. Red hair. And hand me and down any robe. other detail. <laughs> so people start coming from all over into Hogsmeade for the funeral. Um, showing up, Madame Maxine comes in ye old blue carriage. 
Um, ministry people are staying in the castle. Like, there's people everywhere. Imagine having the government set up shot in your school. Yeah, don't you hate it when the president uh, is just, like, sleeping in the gym and you have to avoid him all day? <laughs> it's the worst. Uh, that's funny, because we grew up in the D.C. area, Haley, and, like, did you ever, like, get caught up in, like, a random, like, road motorcades Motorcade dude let me fucking tell you about this all right <laughs> it mostly doesn't happen that much because like around dc the president and or vice president usually has like just enough consideration for the residents to like take a yeah. helicopter or something yeah don't drive around, because if man. they drive around they have to shut down an entire stretch of like the whole route there and everybody has to sit there and wait. So, like, one time, like, oh, it was, I think it was, like, the first year I started college up in New Hampshire. So I'm going from D.C. to New Hampshire. On the way, like, to get out of the city, we get stuck oh. in a motorcade for the better part of two hours. And No, <laughs> that's a horrible start to that long of a road trip. Yeah, it was. It might have even been, like, when we went to like visit the school for the first time we might have been on the way to the airport because i was with my mom and then we stayed the night in a hotel in new hampshire and then the next morning we were on our way to the school and got stuck in the parking lot of the hotel because joe biden was oh, wait, in, in new hampshire in new hampshire oh shit and the motorcade was going by Oh, wow. So is that two Medicaid's? Yes. In, like, 24 hours? Yes. <laughs> That's funny that you ran into it away from D.C. where you live. Yeah, no, like, we really, we had been complaining about the one in D.C. Oh, my God. Uh, like, I can't fucking believe that we, like, we made the flight or whatever. And then, like, it, immediately, immediately. Like, yeah. what the hell are you doing up here? <laughs> To me, it seems incredibly common that when they're... I don't know, because Medicaid aren't a thing that happened here unless the President of the United States is visiting. Didn't, um, one of your pro didn't one of your Prime Ministers go for a swim and then vanish and they never found yeah. him and no one cared? Oh, yeah. We never change our security measures. <laughs> <laughs> they um, learned nothing. What are you going to do about we sharks? We learned nothing. We named a pool after him. That's about all we learned. <laughs> oh, um, my God. That's kind of like insult to injury. <laughs> And by injury, I mean death, presumed death. Um, but uh, you can run into the prime minister getting coffee if you're, because he's, because he's not like, and this is the hard thing to describe, because he's the prime minister, he's not elected separately as prime minister. He's elected as a member of Congress or parliament. And then yeah. he, the party in power gets to decide who is the prime minister. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually it's the leader of their party. Uh, so we've never had to do that. But, like, I would assume in D.C. that, like, there would be, like, the airports would be ready. And as soon as they would hear wind of a motorcade, they'd just delay all flights if they can't get everyone on. Uh, because you're you're making a lot of assumptions about yeah. the about staff flights. at Reagan National in Dulles. They don't care. Yeah. I think I was over by Dulles on 66 when I got caught like on an exit ramp because no one could get on 66. And my mom and I were like, what the fuck? And we turned on the radio and they were like, hey, if you're stuck on 66, we can't tell you what's going on there. And we don't know, but you can probably guess, can't you? And I was like, ah, the president. <laughs> mm, that fucker. <laughs> that fucker. I think at the time this was Obama, maybe. He's still a fucker if he's causing a motorcade. I don't give a shit. No, for sure, for sure. And, you know, so many other notes about that man <laughs> <laughs> that we're not going to get into here because we get to see a different leader maybe later. So because there's so many visitors in the castle, Harry, Ginny, Ron, and Hermione just, like, hang outside a lot. And basically, Harry just can't stop thinking about how he needs to dump Ginny. But, like, you know, he doesn't want to. Not trying now. to get in the last smooches. Some summer smooching is the best kind. Cue Grease music. Which, like, is still making Ron visibly uncomfortable as well. Ron, you don't have to, like, look away. Yeah, fuck Ron. He's he's making it Hermione, weird. Hermione, go fuck Ron. Distract him. Well, <laughs> just you wait. <laughs> I mean, she doesn't fuck him, but, like, she distracts him. Yeah. In the Gryffindor common room one night by the fire, Ginny complains about Fleur one last time. <laughs> 
she's like, I guess Bill's gonna marry her, and it's like, okay, Jenny. <laughs> I just you of all people. It's Harry going. She's ugly. I'm like Harry. Harry's like, uh, she's not that bad or whatever. What is? She? And then yeah. Jenny glares at him, and he's like, oh, aunt, but ugly or like whatever. She just raises her eyebrows, which like, not even doesn't necessarily mean anything. Yeah, because if Sean's like, ooh, this girl's hot, and then I raise my eyebrows, that means I agree. (laughs) But, like, he's not, (laughs) he's not, like, saying that she's hot. He's saying she's not that bad. She's not that bad of a human being. Which, like, (laughs) is true. He he has some level of rapport with Fleur. But also, I don't think that... Respect, share trauma. Yeah, I also don't think that, like, Jenny is, like, Jenny is necessarily being, like, jealous here, no, I, I think, think she, she just finds all. Fleur, like, liter- just genuinely annoying. Yeah, well, that's how sisters are, honey. Mm. Get used to it. Uh, so I've heard. It's a damn shame. It's a de- They are, deeply. I feel sorry because this conversation comes right after we describe how Bill, how bad Bill's face is got up. And it's not even, there's not even a crack made. At, like, you know, knowing my siblings, there would be a crack made that now Bill's ugly, they can't get married or something. Someone would make a joke to that effect. No yeah. one's been making jokes at Bill's expense. Everyone's been, everyone likes Bill. Why does everyone like the oldest child? Well, they're not supposed to. This is how you know J.K. Rowling wasn't in a big family or you know a family with lots of siblings. I think that Bill, we don't get to see a ton of it, but what's not to say? What's to say he doesn't have eldest daughter syndrome, Sam? Just like us, he could. Eldest also, daughter. I have He's eldest daughter and eldest everyone. brother, where I'm both equally hated and do all of the mental labor of the family at the same time. <laughs> so. Well, because in the next book, when they go to Shell Cottage and Bill's like, I, the only thing I can do for you is provide you like a home and food and safe space. And it's like, that's very elder sisterly of him. <laughs> yeah. Like, I guess it kind of depends on what exactly the age differences are. Because, like, if Bill mm-hmm. is a lot older than most of the other brothers, then, like... I don't think he is. I don't know. I think he's at least a lot older than, like, the twins on down. So the twins are 18. I think that... And then I would say that... And then Percy is, like, 20. And then Charlie could be, like, 22 and Bill, like, 24. I don't think he has to be that much older. But, like, if there is more of an age gap, like, uh-huh. he would be... He wouldn't have, like, the cane instinct, as they call it, of, like, when you're children together, like, you just... It's like an animalistic relationship of just, like, like fucking with each other. You're more willing to fight your, like, your uh, brother if he's closer in age to you. Because, like, you've been fighting your whole lives. I think that they are close in age. I think they're all really close in age. I think that a lot of them are young enough that, like, Bill was away at school and then away at a job. And so never had like the, I have to like, he never didn't have a sense of responsibility toward them. Yeah. So like he had to be nice. Like the young, the younger ones. Yeah. Yeah, But like him and Charlie probably have a much more like fucking, like Charlie's probably the one making those jokes. And I think we've talked about this before about how Percy was like the oldest youngest. Like at one point he was like the sweet youngest child. And I think what fucked him up is getting shunted from youngest <laughs> into super middle. Mm. You're, you're very right. You're very right. My younger brother Thomas has been shunted from youngest to not youngest um, after like three or four years. Hard. There's about a three or four year gap between him and the child underneath him. And he's great with the children, but oh gosh, is he up himself sometimes. He says some <laughs> he says some of the most out of pocket things ever. Yeah, I get the feeling that like Percy, uh that Bill and Charlie were like gentle with Percy and like real and chummy. And that means like sometimes uh what'd you say? The cane thing? What is that? Yeah, like I, I don't think enable. that they have like the cane instinct for like the younger siblings. Yeah, that, but like think- Ron and the twins do. Yeah, I feel oh like God, Ron yeah. and the twins will <laughs> absolutely fight each other. Ginny will fight any one of them any time of day. They had their phase one twin, their phase one kids and their phase two kids. Yes. So like they're, they're not going to make those jokes at like a phase one brother. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I'm actually <laughs> yeah. of the opinion that Bill is significantly older than we think he is. Like I think really? I in my head, 
and I could be wrong. Like, there could this could be written out somewhere, and I could be so entirely wrong. But the way he's characterised gives me, like, 26, 27 vibes. Although that, that would make it creepy with Fleur. Uh, I don't know. Fleur is, uh, like, 21 right now. So let's call Bill 24. <laughs> uh, that, that makes sense. <laughs> Um, yeah, Bill's in the hospital wing, um, recovering this whole time. He's, like, not full werewolf, but he likes his meat raw. Honestly, th- how is he different from most men in America? <laughs> he could come here, he'd fit right in. Flo makes the delightful comment about how, like, the British cook their meat too much. And I was like, oh, okay, so J.K. Rowling is mildly self-aware of the egregious nature of some British food. Yeah. You can't Slash, not be. I, I think she's actually still just being shitty toward the French here because she's like, aren't they such bitches about our shitty food? <laughs> You're right. They're just not strong enough to eat whatever the f- kippers for breakfast. <laughs> Ew. So they're in the common room. They're chilling by the fire. Hermione reports from the newspaper that they're still looking for Snape, but no luck. Jenny goes to bed. Hermione wants to share something she learned lately. She's like, hey, Harry, I was right. She he literally like, can't resist. <laughs> she literally can't resist. I'm Hermione in this moment. She's he, Harry's like, did you figure out who R.A.B. is? And she's like, no, uh, <laughs> I'm just something that doesn't matter anymore. I'm here to rub your nose in it. <laughs> I just really, really want you to know it's very important to me that you are aware in your yes. moment of grief and hardship that I was right and you were wrong. <laughs> so she's learned that Eileen Prince, who she has previously brought to Harry being like, is this the Half-Blood Prince? And Harry's like, no, I can just tell that it's a dude. <laughs> um, Eileen Prince actually was Snape's mom so she was like kind of right about the half blood prints lol and harry's like thanks thanks a lot <laughs> really really appreciate that side note like the way that hermione found this was from like newspaper announcements in like old daily prophets of like a tiny announcement about eileen prince burying a man named tobias snape and then later an announcement saying that she'd given birth so like I know that newspapers used to announce, like, engagements and marriages and births and stuff, but, like, uh-huh. is our obituaries the only part of that that's still a thing? Do they still do that? I think in, like, smaller towns you could find, in local papers, you could find stuff like annou- like those kinds of announcements, but I don't, not in, like, proper newspapers, I huh. don't think. Just interesting to me. I was wondering how Hermione is looking through all these old newspapers without, is it called a microfiche? Yes, it is. And surely yes. that's too high tech for wizards. I mean, they did have a projector in one of the movies. So that's movie. That's but fake. Like, he also and- does. He also does Lumos over his summer break with mm. no consequences in the movie. Part of me thinks that he that there is like library magic where you there is like a whole search system. So you can like, like and that. so you can find things that mention it fairly easily. And so Hermione like, he's, like, making herself sound, like, way more dedicated to finding this out than she actually is. It's just it's a, basically a Google search. Well, if they're not yeah. going to learn how the library works, then why should she downplay uh, her achievements by telling the truth? Let them think <laughs> that she did all this fucking research. True. True that. Harry basically is haunted by his past, and he cannot stop thinking about... Dumbledore's misplaced trust in Snape. It's like haunting him, which I get it. Whenever he has a crush, he's got to think about it at all hours of the day. Yeah, he's fallen out of love with Draco. Now he's into older men. No! Although, the crush really develops on Draco here in this chapter too. Mm. Does he really? They talk about Draco Well, he he just... uh, He... He does change his stance on Draco to being a little more pitying. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Crush Which I think those. humanizes Draco a lot and sets it up really well. Because despite not reading the next book, I know some of the main plot points. And I think it sets it up well for the the next book. Yeah. Yeah. But it does seem like the spark is gone. You know, he's not as horny for him anymore. No, no. He's like, oh, he's you're like, kind of a this... wet cat of a guy, huh? Just yes. a little wow, pathetic. I've met those. I've met those. Oh, yeah, we all know. 
We've all met a wet cat in our day. So the next day is the funeral, and then they're all going to go home afterwards. So Harry gets up early to pack. They're, they're going to go home, is- like, one hour after the funeral. The train leaves. Like, you go to the funeral, and then the train, like, that's sudden. Everyone's just crying on the train. Anyone who's mildly disorganized, like, yeah, I'm just like, I'm sorry. Just also, your shit out of luck, there's no kid. time to change. Like, like, are you going home in your dress robes? Which I'll get into the whole dress robes and outdoor funeral in summer thing in a minute. But like, mm-hmm. that is... at least in Scotland, you're right. You're right. It's true. I've had outdoor events in for school outdoor events. So every year on the 25th of April, Australia and New Zealand celebrate a federal holiday called Anzac Day. And it's like our like Remembrance Day or Memorial Day or Veterans Day, bits and pieces. Drink. And it's on the 25th of April to commemorate when we first landed at Gallipoli, the first time we as a nation were involved in a conflict as a nation and World War I and bits and pieces. Drink. And because the event involves raising flags, lowering flags and laying wreaths and there's a garden around where they've so they've propagated what's called Lone Pine, which is this pine tree that was left standing despite all of the fighting that went on. They've propagated it. So, like, you, there are Lone Pines all across Australia. Um, and there's one sit- it was sitting in our, like, school garden. So they did it at the Lone Pine. And so you would sit out in the hot, like, it's the last hot day of the year around that, that week. And you'd be in long sleeve white shirts. The senior schoolers oh. were in blazers long dress pants, girls were wearing stockings and long skirts. For me, I was playing trombone, so then I adding, you know, movement that generally just makes me sweaty in winter. Ooh. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, no, like the you've been you've been to visit us in the summer, so yeah. like you know that I summer in the American South, also no fucking joke. Um yeah. but like at the very least, I uh, Scotland, if you look at like the lines of um latitude on a map, like and go straight across the Atlantic to uh, the States. Scotland is, like, on a level with Maine. So, like, a little more comfortable. Yeah. A, a little bit. When I graduated from college, it was May in the South. And we, like, all met in the student center. And then we, like, walked across campus to, like, the whatever convocation center and i was with my friend Catherine. may she rest in peace another uh really cool drug death everyone check on your friends <laughs> she was like i'm so drunk if i fall down you have to catch me and i was like i'll catch you babe this was normal it was college and then <laughs> but by the time we got there and we all like filed into the convocation center we weren't allowed to sit until everyone had sat and i was like i'm gonna faint right now i was so dizzy and i was like Catherine, i'm gonna faint and I literally had my whole, like, body weight on here. I was, like, luckily, like, 50 pounds lighter so she could really hold me up. But I was, like, you got to hold me. She was, like, wait, I, th- you're not supposed to pass out. <laughs> but luckily I made it and I didn't fall down in front of all those people. I'm so proud. And then I ate a granola bar. So, but dress robes, to me, I feel like a dress robe would be enough layers to go outside in like our winters here in Virginia comfortably. Yeah. Like that's layers. Yeah, you'd be fine. Like I'm a little more curious about like the same dress robes from the Yule. Those were very exactly colorful. What I was about to some say. people Just, some people we... had hot pink. Hot pink. Yeah, there was hot pink involved. So is that is that, can't is be that right. the vibe? Like multicolored like I I can see Dumbledore like liking that, de- like <laughs> deliberately asking even for a multicolored funeral because like he Aww. definitely planned this. Like, give me a multicolored. Like funeral. it's so dramatic. The whole thing is like he definitely planned his own funeral to be like oh, yeah. as dramatic as possible. So yeah, I mean, but like my question throughout all of this is, who the fuck is the guy talking? Okay, Please. do they have do Hold they on. have priests? Hold on, wait for that. Wait for but that. But do they have priests that. though? I want to I want to harp on the dress the dress robes thing because I've had this complaint throughout the whole series where JK Rowling is like I invented this and it's like hey babe you didn't have to invent this. She I remember she like capitalized the word altreats. She was like I invented altreats. And it's like hey that's because altreats are dead mice babe. You invented them in a way that's not dead mice. She's like always like I did this. And so I feel like she's like 
Oh, yeah, they put on dress robes. And it's like, can't they just put on dresses? Like, why do you have to complicate it like this? Why can't they just be wearing normal clothes? Like, why? Their uniform is already you, black. Why? That's a great point. Why are your... Why are your wizards so ignorant about the outside world? They can't even begin to imagine how to dress for it. Such that they're all constantly wearing long sleeves and knee socks. <laughs> also, like, at least for a uniform school like Hogwarts is, for, for me, the understanding always was if the school had, like, if a student died or a school had to rock up to a funeral in some capacity... The people who would rock up to that funeral, the students specifically who would rock up that uniform, funeral, <laughs> sorry, would be in their uniforms. Like, yeah, that, it's that, like respectful. It also, and I don't know whether this is just more of a branding thing and it's a private school thing, but like, it was also, you've got to maintain, like, you're representing the school, you're there on behalf. Like, the school, theoretically, there was a student who died of cystic fibrosis in when I was at like year eight or year nine. And so the school captains, and I think the school vice captains, because she was actually from year 12, rocked up on behalf of the school. So there were staff and students who who represented the school at the I funeral. See. Because obviously when a student dies, that's a really big thing that... You yeah, know, it's rare. Be. Yeah. Like, they, they also like mentioned black armbands at one point, which is another like traditional like like mourning thing. Like there, There's so many other options than just like you know your party outfit wear that yeah the only one you've ever gotten yeah his, his are green like the, okay. like, you know we have all purpose formal wear yeah harry got up early to pack everyone is just really nice they go down for breakfast the headmaster's seat at the high table is left empty um scrim shower and percy are there though it's like it says like snape's seat had been unceremoniously stolen by scrim shower and i'm like well that i like that that's solid yeah just get that whole well. vo- Scrimshower's vibe is so strong he can get any other vibe out of that chair. <laughs> He'll give it a scrim shower. Ew, but that's what we need right now. I've been drinking, for anyone who's wondering, I've been drinking a Moscow mule this whole time. Oh, is that what's in there? I have a whole bottle of red sitting on my bedroom floor that I've been meaning to it's drink. I was supposed to drink it last night. It's 10, it's well, it's 11:30 a.m. now. It is 11.30. Which I guess is late, and it's a weekend for you, actually. So you know what? You should. <laughs> it's also, like, because I work breakfast shift, it's, like, the equivalent of, like, my 3 p.m. Sam, are you in your new place right now? Yes. Is this your bedroom? It is my bedroom. Okay, I need to know. That picture on the wall behind you, do you move that with you? Is that your picture? That is not mine. I it was already there in the room. It. Yeah, it looked like it. I'm asking because I feel like if I typed in like, oh, like cool Australian Airbnb getaway, <laughs> I, it's like a picture of like a beautiful sea with like a canoe in it, but like not an American canoe, which is what the Gord canoe is. It's like some other kind of boat, and it, it looks, looks it's like Australian beach vacation. <laughs> it looks like it's been taken in like Vanu- Vanuatu or something like. I was thinking Moana, which is same part of the world, right? Yeah, same part of the world, same cultures, similar designs. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Um, So they all go down to the funeral. They all head down to the lake. A ton of people are there. Basically everyone we've met so far who isn't dead or in prison, including like like Ernie the bus driver and like... Why does he get to go? Like, is that, are there so many people here? I, th- I feel like he's mentioned specifically based on the conversation later in the chapter between um, Harry Potter Sam. and Scrimgeour. Ah, uh, okay. Mm. And uh, the barman of the Hogshead! Oh, yeah, you're right about that. Yep. Every extra ever. Oh, my God. Like, he's... Just is he there by himself? Is he hanging? I hope he's standing with Rose Murta, and I hope Rose Murta is unimperious. Surely uh, she is by now. Also, I just want to comment. Um, Madame Maxime is described as taking up two and a half chairs on her own. I uh, not two chapters ago, there were people just conjuring chairs out of thin fucking air, just to remind us that wizards can do that. Sure. Why? <laughs> Did nobody Why think... Why not big chair? Why not big chair? <laughs> like, dude, babe, make your own if no one accommodated you. What the fuck? 
It's really funny because right before we recorded this, I was watching Archer and um, he is in a French restaurant and the waiter comes over to him and is like, uh, un chaise, monsieur? And I have very bad French pronunciation, but chaise me- just means chair. Um, he said, un chaise, monsieur, or like whatever. And Archer said, two. And it, uh, like he obviously thought it was a cocktail. <laughs> and then the waiter brought over two chairs and he sat resolutely on both of them <laughs> to stand by his choice. <laughs> so it's funny that we're talking about this right now. <laughs> uh, also, yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't remind know about me, I thought situation. Madame Maxine and Hagrid were dating. So why is Hagrid sitting separate up the back with Gorp? When, why wouldn't Madame Maxine also be up the back with him? Uh, I think she's not back there because of appearances. Straight up. And I think he's not with her because of Grop. I think they just talked about it and they were like, we don't, I guess we don't have to sit together. Because Harry mentions that, like, when she rocks up in her blue carriage, um, that she basically, like, c- comes out and just, like, hugs Hagrid straight away. So I was, like, yeah. a bit confused. I'm like, you've already made a PDA. So what's going on here? <laughs> you've made a PDA. I mean, she and Grop are acquainted from, like, the yeah, hike back through Europe. So it, it might honestly just be a thing of like, you know what? I feel like if I sit near him, uh, it's going to piss him off because he remembers me. So I'm going to sit over there and I will see you later. Because you, know <laughs> you know what happens at funerals, bitches be getting horny. Yeah, I don't know. I really do feel like there might be some element of like not wanting to be associated publicly with giants. You're probably mm. right. We don't know. We don't know what she's doing at this point, even though she's one of the side characters I would most want to learn more about, for sure. Oh, yeah, she's awesome. Realistically, if J.K. Rowling wasn't a bitch, um, we, I would love to see, like, a spin-off series. Wow. Dream big, Sam. What a wonderful world that would be. Um, also, even the ghosts are here, and that's cool because it's the first time we've seen them outside. I Proves think. they can go outside. Yeah, I always forget they can technically leave. Yeah. Are they, like connected to the property or like? I used to think that but like there's a bit I think in book four when Myrtle is just like rambling about haunting the girl who bullied her and like apparently showed up at her brother's wedding or something and what? and like then got banned and like from like basically a ministry restraining order which how would you do what can you do to a ghost it's a ghost but, like, she kind of had to live in Hogwarts because she was no longer allowed to haunt all of Hornby. Do you want to know, like, sometimes the amount of Harry Potter trivia that's in my brain, as opposed to, like, basic math, it really pisses me off. Because I was like, I'm going to Google this girl to see if this is true. And I just knew, already knew that her name was Olive Hornby. And, like, I don't want that in my head. I don't need to know who Olive Hornby is, but I do. Mm. I mean, think how I must feel. I remembered it off the top of my head that Dude, all of that happened. Haley, you and you were right. Moaning Myrtle did interrupt her brother's so wedding. That's bitch. crazy. <laughs> I, I honestly was. I wasn't one hundred percent on brother. It says Olive went to the Ministry of Magic to get rid of the troublesome ghost, and Myrtle was then sent back to Hogwarts. But like how? <laughs> I know. An how are you going to tell her what to do? <laughs> Are you gonna act, are you gonna get a wizard priest to do an exorcism? Are there wizard mm-hmm. priests? I return to my previous question. I reckon wizards are allergic to Catholicism. Uh, yeah, I'm sure of that. This is my question. Um, wait, we'll get to it when the priest comes up. But is he a priest? The Harry's just kind of sitting there looking at everyone and like all the other students walking up and taking their seats, and he's reflecting. About how Luna and Neville were the only people who responded to the DA summons um, that night when Dumbledore died. And, like, I burst into tears when this part came up because it's just, like, so sweet and beautiful. And they're just so lonely and they have, like, so much to give. And it's just really sad. Yeah, I, I did underline those lines. Okay, but why the fuck weren't they all sitting together? <sighs> like, seriously, like, I underlined those lines and just wrote ow next to them. Yeah, ow. You should have paid more attention to them this year. You know how lonely they are. Luna and Neville are really, really good characters who, like, did not get enough at all. Mm-hmm. At all. Mm-hmm. I mean, Neville's Neville's journey is good, but, like, it's mostly, like, implied from a distance at this point. Like, mm. oh, I would have loved... I would have loved if it was Neville instead of Harry, honestly. <laughs> Please. That, but that's basically Percy Jackson. <laughs> Sorry, my brain has gone full ADHD moment. 
Um, Do it. I have a question about seating at this fucking funeral. Okay, tell me. <laughs> First of all, why no big chairs? <laughs> why no big chairs? <laughs> We've got that. We've got that under control, theoretically. But what I don't understand is beside immediate family, really close friends, dignitaries, representatives, who, like, what order are the school students sitting in? Where are they sitting in the, the grand scheme of things? Because we know that Harry, Ginny, Hermione, and Ron are all sitting together. But sure. then Luna and Gin- uh, Luna and Neville are sitting separately. And of all of a group of people, I would assume to be all together. I would assume it would be the six of them because all six no. of them were, yeah, were close. But, but then, uh, like, the other thing is that like ha- Hermione and Ron are prefects, aren't they? Sure, prefects. So. Sure. Wouldn't they be, as representatives of the school, be sitting up towards the front anyway as, like, leaders of the school? Okay. I think that them needing to be, like, acting as prefects is a great point here. They haven't done any prefect shit in at least 300 pages. Mm. (laughs) I honestly forgot. I do think that Luna and Neville are not sitting with Harry, Ron, and Hermione because Harry, Ron, and Hermione do not value Luna and Neville as friends. I mean, that did... I think that's what it is. That's the vibe here. Yeah. Which more fool them. Ha- like Harry's Harry literally is like, wow, they're so pathetic. Even though he's doing it in like a nice way, he literally is like, wow, they're so lonely that they answered my call. <laughs> it's fucked. Too bad I spent this entire year obsessed with my mortal enemy. My beautiful, beautiful mortal enemy. <laughs> Who I know? I'm kind of over. <laughs> so it wasn't even worth it. <laughs> Um, also, we see Fudge, Umbridge, and Rita Skeeter are all there. Yeah, what, the f- what the fuck are y'all doing here? I mean, I think Fudge should be there. He never did anything, like, wrong, wrong, you know? I, I mean, aside from all of the propaganda and... and uh, I know. I just feel bad for the idiot. Like, ugh. he was in a pickle. It's easy, it's easy to feel sorry for, like, a fake politician, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Last I remember, like... Umbridge was in a forest being tortured. Oh no, they, no Dumbledore no, went and out. got her. Uh, yeah, Dumbledore walked in by himself and brought her but out. But she still is like deeply, night. deeply terrified of centaurs. Yeah, yeah. understandably, mm. honestly. And I understand why Rita Skeeter is there. I'm not quite sure why she's there at the school after what happened, she, what happened last time when Hermione imprisoned her. No, she but should not be there. And then she goes up. on to write this horrible book about him last year. Her, I mean, next year. Her year is up. Hermione, yeah, I, Hermione yeah. told her one year. So now she can You're do right. what she wants. There's also singing mermaids. There's centaurs in the woods. Like, everyone's here, guys. Yeah. Is that show really beautiful? It is. It is kind of, I mean, you know. You can look at it in a way where you're ready to make fun of it, or you can, you know, for, like, having, like... It seems very disorganized. Every, it's disorganized, like, every character we've ever met, mm. and, like, they're sitting, like, the mean girls and being like, you can't sit with us, and, like, <laughs> there's a lot of things to laugh at, but, like, if, you, if you're if you trying to put yourself in the mindset of taking this seriously as, like, a narrative moment, like, I, it is really beautiful, and, like, this whole chapter, I was feeling, like, very somber, like, very bittersweet wrapping this book up. Mm. Hagrid enters carrying Dumbledore's body, and he puts it on, like, a pedestal, or, like, I guess the white tomb, I it's guess. It's like a table. At this point, it's it is table. basically a table. Yeah. He walks back everyone, back past everyone to Grop, and then some old guy comes up to do the you googleizing. Thought you were going to tell me what a bad you googleizer I am. A what? A you googleizer? One who speaks at funerals? Or did you think I'd be too stupid to know what a you googly was? A, li- a little old man in in plain black robes. That's all we get. Plain black That's robes. That's a priest. That's Mr. Collins from Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> what excellent boiled potatoes. <gasps> oh no, I hope not. <laughs> but like, just I have, because like Britain has such a weird history with Christianity and like the different denominations like it's like the Anglican Church is like kind of Protestant but like not post Luther Protestant so Mm -hmm. like it's it's weird it's like the middle child of the major the major sex and like it also gets in so much more trouble for its opinions on shit than the Catholic or the Protestant churches do because it sits between the two yeah so like is 
Like, where do wizards fall? That's all I want to know. I don't know. <laughs> I wonder if this guy is a professional ministry you googleizer. You googleizer. <laughs> I mean, that was, like, a whole industry in, like, Rome, at least. Like, you would have professional Ooh. mourners. Like, really? Yeah, I'd you would... Re- I'd be really good at that. You, yeah, like, honestly, it's... It, it seems like kind of a sweet gig. Like, you just get paid to, like, like tear your shirt open and show your tits and, like, claw yeah. your hair and cry and follow a coffin through the streets. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I know when I worked in newspapers, we did obituaries quite frequently so realistically between doing an obituary and a eulogy especially for someone who has impacted so many people i can see that you could like just go can we hire one of the ministry's people to do this please i'm thinking this is not the same thing as dumbledore but i'm thinking about when my grandma died she was like the matriarch of everything and we were like, uh, who, who on earth could talk? And that's why Catholicism, like Catholic funerals are good is because it's like the priest talks. But you still have to do the, I don't know, side side quests, ha, ha sermons. I don't know all the language. I'm really bad Catholic. Side quests. <laughs> but like, you know, like someone who like knew the person comes up and like cries into the microphone and they've never used a microphone. So they don't know they sound really bad. Yep. They read something yep. from the Bible. Yeah, par for the course. Um, but it's like it is kind of like a relief where it's like, okay, yeah, just like the priest is gonna do it. Yeah, instead of like having an aunt come up and say something completely out of pocket. Yeah, or or just like putting that emotional pressure on anyone who is like acutely grieving right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because like if Harry was like thirty, I think it would have been like Harry, you gotta say something. But it's like there's not really any, or like Aberforth in another world, like Aberforth, you gotta say something, or McGonagall. But like none of these are like real good options. Like <laughs> honestly, I would go for McGonagall. Like Aberforth simply will not. Harry, too young, not good at public speaking. Or like, like Flitwick would have been good. Flitwick probably. would be good, but like you would need to put him on a stack of books, and it would look kind of silly. Okay, no, it would look cute. Does, like Ed would have to project <laughs> so much. He's got teeny tiny yeah, lungs. Like McGonagall can command a crowd. You're right. Oh, uh, that would have been good. The problem with choosing someone from the cast of characters where you already know is that there we've only seen Dumbledore in a professional capacity, and I know that the personal and professional yeah. kind of get blurry. Because you're living on campus in bits and pieces. Drink. And the other thing I was thinking is, well, they could have, like, a ministry assigned eulogizer because, theoretically, he'd be an employment employed by the ministry in some capacity because, like, he, you know, delivers education to children and that's all regulated through the ministry. We learned that last book, <clears throat> Umbridge. Mm-hmm. But to me, it's like... I actually, there is no, like, clear answer as to who should be giving that eulogy. Realistically, from the narrator's point of view, it makes sense if it was Harry, but, like, Harry does not know Dumbledore in the same way that anyone else really does. And he can't talk. He's also just a liability in general. Yeah, every every part of that is a bad decision, I think. Nobody even thought about it for one second. Wait, like, in... To their credit. In the seventh book, when Harry meets... Oh, God, what was his name? Was it no. Elpheus Doge? His friend, his yeah. childhood friend? It, yep. Is this Elpheus Doge? Oh. Because, like, I hmm. I might remember Harry, like, meeting him at Bill and Fleur's wedding. Like, I know he meets them at the he meets him at the wedding, but, like, he might, like, recognize him as the little man in black. But also a little hmm. man in a plain black robes, it still sounds like a vicar. Like... It does it's, sound like a vicar. Yeah, and, like, I remember reading something, probably from, like, the notes on Pottermore or something, like, years and years ago, where, like, it was specifically mentioned that wizards wear dress robes for weddings, balls, and christenings, which implies that wizards have wizard christenings. So, like, there is a wizard church, presumably. So according to hplexicon.org, the same guy who does Dumbledore's funeral officiates Bill and Fleur's wedding, not Elpheus Doge. Okay. Okay. So this is sounding more and more like a vicar. 
Yeah. And then it's a because it's like a character page. It says skills. Performs weddings and funerals. <laughs> like a vicar. <laughs> like a, or a it says, clown. It, it says profession <laughs> clergyman. Okay, so there's wizard clergy. What is this? Wizard clergy. That sounds worse than the ministry. Is there a wizard pope? I have to know. <laughs> a, it says apparently a member of the wizarding clergy. And this is HP Lexicon's language. But like, it's like, it literally says the page I'm on right now is home dash characters dash tufty haired man who gives Dumbledore's <laughs> eulogy. <laughs> That's like the path I've taken to get oh here. Oh my God. Oh, this is very funny. Okay. All I have is more questions. <laughs> well, it's like the whole cars Pope like question just now. Like we go down that line of questioning. Is there a cars is, Pope? Is there, is there a cars pope? Vatican? Uh, sorry. Wizard Vatican. <laughs> To me, they regulate dark magic. It's like, to me, it feels very much like you've got, like, the light and the dark of um, so it's like Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. No. Shush, shush, shush. <laughs> no Star Wars talk. No Star Wars talk. Although, wait, be... I I was thinking earlier. Wait, I'll, I'm going to wait and do it. I'm going to wait and do it. <laughs> I have a Star Wars joke that I, like, thought of five hours ago. <laughs> You've just been sitting that, on it, huh? I'll bring it up when it's time. Um, what what are we doing? Okay, so... Wizard, um, wizard clergy. Wizard clergy. Harry can't really hear the googly. He's sitting there being like, uh, Oddment, Nitwick, Nitpick, nit, 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 Nitwick, Oddment, Blubber, nit Tweak. Uh, Oddment, Blubber, Tweak. And I'm like, huh, a couple of those words are like actually not that good. When you look at them. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know. But it, like, but makes, you, okay. it makes you giggle at the... Uh... <laughs> Sounds funny, I guess. Well, I mean, that was what <laughs> Dumbledore said by their very first night at Hogwarts. No, I'm aware. Like, but just seeing them like this, I'm like, nitwit, nitwit, blubber. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, just like tweaking. separated out, like different They're weird words. Marks. They sound, they they sound weird. funny together. And now he's like giggling Tweaking's at a the word funeral, that we use. which like... Who who hasn't who hasn't giggled oh my God. at a funeral? No, listen. Okay, so at my <laughs> I'm gonna talk to you about giggling at a funeral. My at my grandma's funeral. This is like such a sad story, I think. <laughs> but like, my stomach hurt so bad all day. I was like so nauseous, like acutely nauseous. Like this was not like I forgot to eat breakfast nausea. Like it was like really something unusual for me. I'm not like a nauseous getting girl. I was so nauseous all day. Travel up, whole funeral, travel back down. I was 100% sure I was pregnant. I was like, this is Dee Dee's final revenge. She always wanted me to have a baby. <laughs> uh, like, I'm definitely pregnant. Like, there's no other explanation for this. And all, so all day long, Sean, Sean and I stopped to, like, get a pregnancy test for, like, later. Like, all day long, Sean and I were like, oh, fuck, man, am I pregnant? And we were we were in the church kind of, like, giggling about that. <laughs> we were like, because it was like, wow, wouldn't that be way more horrible than also what is just happening right now? <laughs> As Sean and I do not wish for kids. Mm. Um, it turns out that I super wasn't pregnant, and I guess it was just grief. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I love just that. Not take it. her final revenge. We... So my, about a week out from the funeral, a list of jobs was posted to, and this is the thing, my mother's side of the family has about like seven different group chats. I'm only a part of one of them. That's um, plenty. But some are with my grandmother, some are without my grandmother, some are with just the immediate family, some are with the extended family. So, <laughs> so there were a list of jobs was posted to, I think it was actually posted to a, my immediate family's one from another group chat. My mum had forwarded it on and she, she said, what do people want to do? And I'm like sitting here going, well, I don't know what you want me to do, but I'm hoping to do like this and that. My mother rings me a couple of hours later and goes, actually, can I get you to altar serve for your grandfather's funeral? She's like, I no. do not, you're the only, we're the only branch of the family that really has children trained in altar serving. Um, <laughs> And you and your brother James, who at the time was in a neck brace for falling headfirst over a bike down a mountain. Um, oh my god! Yeah, he broke his spine in three places. Um, 
Yeah. Sam, um, is he, how is he doing? He's fine. He's going skiing in Japan. Shut up. Okay, well, now I don't have, come on, man. <laughs> I would never do anything risky ever again. No, um, well, he's stupid, brilliant. in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, yeah, I had to alter serve. So I got to sit up the front and because alter serving, we were sitting like towards the side of this church. Everyone could see us. And in typical fashion, James was running late. It wasn't his fault. Someone else was driving him. The person who was driving was running late. I'm not naming that person, but anyone who knows me <laughs> probably knows who was driving him. So then we had to sit through and try to not like break fall apart during the funeral while sure. in front of everyone, you know. And then there was this line of jokes said during the eulogy about how my grandfather ran a farm for a little while. And so it was just this line of jokes about how he, he ran this farm, but like it wasn't successful in anything particular. Uh, and they managed to lose most of the livestock and bits and pieces. Drink. We were all like laughing there. I'm like, oh no, I've got to like recover quickly. I can't like laugh really loudly like I normally do. I've got to like laugh <laughs> quiet. <laughs> like, shut up, Sam, shut up. You've got to look <laughs> somber in front of God. It's yeah. true. No, you literally do. I come from a family of altar boys as well. And <sighs> we do call them altar boys as girls are not invited. And I went, we went to a lot of like mass, like eat long masses, like maybe Easter mass in like southern, hot, tiny southern churches. Ooh. And my cousin Christopher was very prone to fainting. The worst one is the Good Friday mass, which is at 3 p.m. on a Friday. And the worst part about it is That's that already if you've a take, bad vibe. If you've taken the concept of fasting really seriously, you haven't eaten much. And so then if you're mildly dehydrated, you are going to faint in front of 300 people. Yeah. Oh, my God. Man, you know what's not that intense is Methodists. <laughs> not even kind of. Not even a little bit. Don't even notice when you leave. <laughs> All right, y'all. Where are we? I Someone someone clergy. magics a, a white tomb oh, no, no, around no. Dumbledore's body. No, no. What? Someone doesn't magic a white tomb. Several people scream. Bright white <laughs> flames erupt oh. around the corpse, obscuring oh. the body. And then once they vanish, like sp sending spirals of fancifully shaped smoke into the air, the tomb is left behind, which is how you know Dumbledore planned his own funeral. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're completely it's right about, about that. it's all about the drama. It's, it's all, all about, about the, the drama. drama. Um, as Mott said, scroll, 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 He does whatever the fuck he wants to, whenever he wants to, including dying. And I'm going to tack on, including a super badass funeral onto that list. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Um, the centaurs do a salute, hail of arrows, totally cool, everyone's ready for that, nobody panics. They don't hit anybody, it's fine. And then I guess the funeral's like over and the our characters just keep sitting there because Harry turns and breaks up with Ginny. At the funeral. Quote, at the funeral. That's what a nice, place to man. break up with someone. Quote, it's for some stu stupid noble reason, isn't it? She really gets him. Yeah. <laughs> She's Honestly. not like other girls. Um, she is not like other girls because she doesn't cry about it. That's his favorite thing about her. <laughs> There'd be a she just and gives cry. him that blazing look. Ugh. It's terrible. It's actually kind of disgusting. Mm. I mean, I, I, it's good that he's breaking up with her. I think that's like a really good reason. He's like, this has been fun, but like, we can't do this in the real world. It'll put you in extreme danger. But yeah, she's like, that's cool, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and then. Harry turns and Ron is like holding Hermione while she sobs and he's like, they pet, love like each other. And he's also crying and petting her hair and like, you know, my boy, he did something right for once. Yeah, he really he, he, he's it's really crazy. This. It's really crazy that they don't make out within like three days of this happening. If Harry is gonna break up, he probably like why didn't he like talk about this with like Ron or Hermione or something? Someone with street smarts to turn around and go. That's a bad idea. Or do it differently or choose a fucking different time. You know who we should have asked know. is Hermione because, like, Ginny's sitting there and telling him, like, yeah, the whole reason that I'm, like, even able to 
talk to you and be normal around you is because Hermione told me to date anybody else and get my own life so that... Yeah, uh, chill out. Yeah, yeah, literally just chill out so that I could be myself around you. Hermione gives amazing and, advice. And she, she Hermione's does. amazing. She's, she's busy right now, though. She is. Good for her. <laughs> Good for her. Scream shower comes up to Harry. Great. You're really excited for this. Harry's like, I don't want to have a word with you. <laughs> and he kind of doesn't get the opportunity to ask for anything because Harry shuts him down so hard. Character growth. We love to see it, finally. Also, fuck the government. I don't owe you my time. I don't owe you my energy. I don't owe you my words. I don't owe you my patience. Yeah, we love to see it. So then R- Harry, Ron, and Hermione are like walking together, I guess. I don't know. Harry tells them he's not coming back to school next year, even if it does open. He's got to go back to the Dursleys one last time. He, he wants to go to Godric Hollow to see his parents' graves, and then he wants to... Tra- I mean, no, he doesn't want to, but he desperately needs to track down the rest of the Horcruxes. Ron and Hermione are like, we're going with you. And Harry's like, he... What? He thought that they would understand right away that he had to do this on his own. <laughs> But they're like, no, we're coming with you. But we need to go to Bill and Fleur's wedding first. And it's really like, wow, so much coming in the next book. And I, this, the end of this chapter had me like, da, da. wait, hold on, hold on. Oh, my God. I started singing and then I like lost it. Da, 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 oh, yeah, da, there you da, go. Da, 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 yeah (laughs) so that's how that that's how this chapter happy you're right you're so right here he's just like looking in the distance thinking about all that's yet to come and there's two suns over the scottish highlands (laughs) it is the most star wars coded ending anyway go listen to skywalk before you run (laughs) hey that's the end of the book Woo! That is the we're end done, of the book. We're, we're, done, done. we're done, done, done. Oh my god. One de- six down, one to go. One last I can't time. believe it. We're entering the finale of this podcast. I'm going to cry like 18 times between now and the last episode. Only 18? Yes. What do you hate us? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's already she's already replaced us, Haley. So <laughs> I knew it. How are you feeling, Haley? Don't get into it too much because you are on our group therapy episode. But like, how the fuck are you feeling? I mean, it's the it's the end of an era and the beginning of a smaller era that is going to herald the end of a bigger era. The yeah, baby, <laughs> you're so right, Sam. How are you feeling? Um, I am really looking forward to the journey to come. I was busy plugging this podcast to my new co-workers because it's one of the first things I do when I start at a new workplace, apparently. Oh, no. Uh, Oh, God, Sam. (laughs) Don't you want them to like you? Look. (laughs) Sorry. Um, You just raised the stakes so much. Dude, even, like, when I started working with Josh, I was, I would not tell him about my, I was like, (laughs) oh, yeah, it's, I, it's just like a Harry Potter podcast. Don't worry about this. Like, please, please don't listen. Well, because I had the recording. People asked me what I'm doing this weekend. And I was like, I actually don't have a huge amount of plan. I do have a podcast recording I'm doing. But like, and they're like, oh, what for? And I'm like, oh, now I've got to explain everything, don't I? Um, <laughs> you don't. You can anyway, just say, I was looking, um, books. Yeah. And looking back on like everything, I'm like, I'm really glad we've been able to read these books in this way. It's not Me like too. I know we've said this before and it's getting a little bit old and tired, but like never. It is really important to like critically analyze literature and when it's literature that is so universally praised, it's so mm. good to sit with like a fine tooth comb and go through exactly what we like or what we didn't like. The egregious crimes of the author that shall not be named. But also, Sorry. you know, how how worldviews and biases have been, you know, incorporated into this. And it's a fascinating, this book I think is so fascinating because I think it actually represents the maturity of the writing coming into play at this point in time. Um, So far the writing has been quite childish, you know, Mm -hmm. some egregious descriptions, some horrific comparisons. Um, 
ejaculate in the last chapter? Yeah, another ejaculate. As a dialogue tag? Why, ejaculate? Is, why, why do we keep doing ejaculate as a dialogue tag? We don't need to. I don't think we're going to ever train her out of this. But in general, <sighs> on a bit more of a broad aspect, I think the writing has gotten more interesting, more light, and more thought through because the seven book series, the, as, a, as a series, this has not been very well thought through. Um, as we were complaining about at the start of the episode, you really don't have a lot of this set up before this book, before the for the ending. So it's yeah. nice to have that all kind of like fall into place um, mm-hmm. and really kind of get a, a bit of a better hold as to what what its what its final messages are going to be. Yeah, I think yeah. book six uh, is one of those things that's better on a reread because when mm. you read it for the first time, like a lot of the things that are tied through the rest of the series don't necessarily jump out at you, so a lot of stuff feels yeah. more jarring, whereas on a reread, when you're going a little slower, you're catching more things of like, oh, okay, this ties back to book two, this ties back yeah, to book three, I recognize there. that guy, like, okay, this doesn't feel like as sudden a shift now that I'm expecting it, um, yeah. which isn't a praise of the book, but it is, it, it's just an effect that it has. Yeah, yeah. I think also, I know that you guys were complaining earlier this season about the lack of editorial direction. I do think that there was a little bit more continuity that was put into this book that I enjoyed seeing. Some more things were kind of tidied Mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. I really hate when a book series has to... Yeah, Yeah. who knew that was a job? (laughs) Um, I really hate book series that tie everything up at the very last book. I know there are there are plenty of talented authors who write open ended series and keep things tied up as they go. I'm glad that we are not tying things up in the last book, but like are slowly tying them over a two three book period of time. Yeah, mm. it's rushed enough that you can tell that a lot of stuff was figured out at the last minute, but it's not so rushed that it feels like a like a a DSX machina, if you will. Yeah. yeah. I'd agree with that. Cool. Well, any last words? Or are we ready to move to plugs? I think we're ready to move to plugs. I have to pee real bad. Do you want to go now? No, I can, I can make it. All right. Sam, where can the people find you on the internet? Woo, you can find me at sam.the.journalist on Instagram and on TikTok. Um, you can also uh, find me on ABC Southeast SA. So if you go to... Um, if you search ABC Australia Southeast SA, which stands for South Australia, um, you can hear me on the breakfast program, which happens to run in the States during like your, your mid morning to early afternoon. Not mid morning, sorry. It's the 6 a.m. our time, like afternoon ish. I listened the other day. It's a lot of fun. I like read the night news at 9 30 my time. Um, there's lots of cool stories and interviews we do about local communities. If you wanted a taste of like what parts of Australia that may not like be explicitly marketed overseas look and sound like this is a really great opportunity. Um, but, uh, and there'll be a couple of stories I have a hand in uh, helping produce as well. That'll be on our news website there as well. Um, otherwise That's you can awesome. find the po- my own podcast, which is coming back next week, content and capable um, on content, the letter and capable on Instagram and um, check us out there. We'll have all the launch details that will be coming out in a post uh, that would have already come out in a post by the time this podcast comes out. Um, and um, I'm very excited to share new episodes and bits and pieces. Drink. I've also all around the network, as Christina said, um, I uh, helping out left, right and center. So, you know, if you want to hear me on burn before reading or, um, um, yes, What's this called? Of oh, the oldest gods. Um, you know, I've, I've recently been on those in the last few months as well. Hell yeah. And what's something you've been reading, playing, listening to, watching lately you think our listeners would enjoy? I have to plug the book Yellow Face by R.F. Huang. Or oh, I own that. Huang. Yeah. Um, it is amazing. Such a fascinating insight to the publishing industry uh, such a fascinating, logical, like, exploration of ethically ambiguous issues. I'm, tr- I'm trying really hard not to spoil it. It reads okay. really quick. Don't be intimidated by the 300 plus pages. 
it reads so incredibly quick. I basically read it in three sittings. Nice. I've always struggled since high school to read physical, sit down and read physical books. So interesting. So many twists and turns. I really suggest reading it. Um, I did not expect the ending whatsoever. Uh, It was really fun to read. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm excited to read that one. Haley, what about you? What are you plugging this week? Uh, This week, I am going to plug the Tasting History Cookbook, which I got for Christmas. Uh, I've plugged Tasting History, the YouTube channel before, Tasting History with Max Miller, um, which is really delightful because it's recipes from all different time periods all over the world. This guy does really, really in-depth research, works very hard to get pronunciations right, um, and according to the people in the comments that actually speak those languages, apparently pretty much nails it all the time. Um, Amazing. And he's just, like, really cute and wholesome, so, like, the actual cookbook has the recipes and then, like, the relevant stories behind the recipes and, like, modern substitutions and stuff. Like, it's really, really cool and, like, it's not just interesting as, like, a book of recipes, it's interesting as a book of history. That's really cool. I'd like to take a look at that. Yeah, by all means. Hell yeah. Well, I've been your host, Christina. You know where to find me. (sighs) I've been struggling with the plugs lately. You know why? Because I've replaced reading (laughs) and TV with crochet. (laughs) You can plug Um, crochet. I I already did. Well, then you're fucked. (laughs) I literally already did. I've got a question about your crocheting. Is there a particular yarn or or dye that you've been using? No. No? Just freeballing it? If you just Google like anything you want to make and then just be like pat like free pattern, then you just mm. get that pattern and it tells you like what kind of weight yarn you need. Most of the yarn I use have been like a four. I don't know if you're supposed to say like a- another word with that, like four pound or like four thread or whatever, but it's a four. Basically just buy like a buy like a, a, four, a four yarn and then just like Google what size hook you need for that and then look up a YouTube video about how to do a single crochet stitch. And then just, like, make some coasters or pot holders until you kind of have it figured out. And then start looking up patterns. That's how you learn to crochet. I need something to do with my hands when I record podcasts. And I've seen how it affected it is Look what I've been you, doing so this whole time. I'm excited. Oh, wow. I've been that's a lot. this whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is so, one symmetrical-ass re- rectangle. <laughs> thank you. It's going to be a hat. Thank you for encouraging me to expand upon my previous plug for crochet, Sam, with a more detailed plug for crochet (laughs) featuring explicit instructions. (laughs) Always happy to help. Hell yeah. And thank you for coming on the pod. And thank you for helping us wrap up the Half-Blood Prince. I can't believe it's over. Okay. Are we allowed to be angry at Harry Potter again? Uh, Yeah, sure. I think I'll be pretty frustrated through the next book. Or maybe (laughs) I'll just be really emotional at the close, you know. Who knows? We'll have to see. Looking forward to it. (laughs) So next week, everyone, we're going to be covering the film with Jason. I'm excited about that one. Um, We're going to do our Half-Blood Prince group therapy episode, of course. Then we're going to have a couple unlocked detention crew bonus episodes. And then we're going to dive right into Deathly Hallows pregame on uh, March 13th. So we will be starting the next book soon. We will be finishing it by the end of the year. And that'll be all for this podcast, y'all. Oh, that rhymed. It'll be done. Thank you. The curse shall be lifted. (laughs) Please set me free. Sam, we love you so much. See you next season. Haley, well, I'll see you later this season. And then next season. I'll see you later this week. (laughs) I'll see you. My cats will see you tomorrow because you're going to come feed my cats. Yes, I will. Thank you. I'll text you. (laughs) Okay. Okay. All right. Well, love you guys. Bye. 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 That's it, potheads. Thanks for listening to The Restricted Section. This podcast is produced and hosted by me, Christina Kahn. Our theme music was produced by Ryan Kahn. Our logo was designed by Michael Hardison. Please connect with us on Twitter at RestrictedPod, on Instagram at RestrictedSectionPod, on Facebook at RestrictedSectionPod, or in our Facebook group, The Restricted Section Detention Crew. Join our Patreon to get access to our Discord server, our bonus episodes, and other cool perks. We're also very happy to be a member of Deus Ex Media, where all you fucking nerds can find all kinds of fandom podcasts to suit your fancy.
Have you ever gotten so distracted in Stardew Valley that you forgot to sleep? Have you realised that you have a whole room in your house full of dolls? Or have you even bored your friends to sleep talking about your passion? Well then, Content Capable is the podcast for you. Join me, Sam, as I chat to people passionate about what they do, asking questions about how they fell in love with their passion, what they do, and how it interacts with their day-to-day lives. Catch the podcast every Monday as I find out what makes someone tick, all while gleaning interesting and insightful life lessons along the way. There'll be laughs, a bit of crying, a whole lot of conversations, and we learn just a little bit more about the world around us. Bits and pieces. Bits and pieces. Bits and pieces. Bits and pieces. Dave X Media.